Hey guys, so, um, this is something I didn't address in the first video about horror, but mainly because, uh, it would have gone on forever, probably, otherwise. So, it's something I want to address here, which is, like, the sort of different types of horror you're going to get in games that aren't necessarily classed as horror. Um, horror is very subjective, as obviously as you probably found it yesterday while listening to me wobble on, which is where, so what does one person find scary, and other won't? I mean, some people will find stuff like Doom 3 with the constant jump scares, hence the name, I suppose, scary, whereas another person will not. You know, they'll just be like, hmm, okay, that's slightly irritating. You know, it's it's, it's a very subjective thing, kind of like humour. You know, some people might think I'm really amusing, other people might think I'm an insufferable asshole. One of the two. Um, so, I've just been thinking, like, there are many games out there that could be classed as horror when lo when looked at, you know. Uh, one I used in uh, my review of Nier was I was saying that Nier is a horror game, and I, I think I'm, I should explain my position on that a bit better. Now, horror doesn't necessarily mean monsters that are going to come out and bite you in the ass, or things that jump out, or ghosts, or anything like that. Horror can just be the situation you and the character find yourselves in. Nier's situation is so completely and utterly hopeless, I suppose, that the horror comes from what's happening to him and you know, in the world around him. I can't say too much without spoiling it, but essentially what's happening is the, wor the, the world is coming to an end, I suppose, and... The, like a parent's worst nightmare, you know, his child is missing, it's, you know, or in the Japanese one, his sister's missing, you know. And, to, you know, in, in this situation you're in is now is now essentially a horror situation for your character. But as you progress and find out what's going on in the world around you, again, I'm very sorry about being vague, but this is quite important not to spoil things, you understand that the sheer hopelessness and depression of this world is, is, is a horrific situation. It, and I would argue that it is, it is horror in, in that sense. It, okay, it doesn't scream at you, it doesn't have monsters, but it's subtle, it's psychological, and it's terrifying when you think about what's actually happening. Now that is a more powerful brand of horror. You know, Silent Hill does it very similarly, but it's a bit more obvious with it. I mean, you know Silent Hill is a horror game when you pick up the damn box, you know, where you look at Nier, you think, hmm, it's an RPG. But the subtleties of it is what will get you eventually. You, But, it, I mean, it's not doing any disappearing ghost acts on you, any things like that, but just the, the whole situation, you know, that is where something really comes into its own and where it will leave a lasting impression upon you you will not forget the situation you and your character have been in because it is so horrific it is horrifying and that's that you know um looking looking again i suppose let's have a think uh someone mentioned about the zombies in uh in a zombie situation now personally i don't think zombies are even remotely scary i don't think shambling walking meat sacks are terrifying one because i don't know i just think they're very overused and dull i've never really liked the whole idea um, I've never liked Left 4 Dead, for example, either. I just, it just doesn't interest me. Like, and that's this, that's fear in a nutshell. That's horror and fear. It's subjective. So what I don't find scary, like I said, someone else may. You know, um, I mean, fright, being scared and frightening can come in so many different forms. Um, for me, I what I think leaves a lasting impression is something you will have to remember. If we look at Jacob's Ladder, the film, if you've ever seen it, it's what they almost base, it's pretty much based Silent Hill on in a sense. Um, Jacob keeps getting confronted by some faceless horrors. Like, they're very subtle, they appear briefly, they look at a window through and pass him on a train. Uh, his world is falling apart, things don't make sense anymore. He's starting to, have, he's starting to hallucinate. Like, he just, n nothing makes sense to him anymore, and his entire world is crashing around him. And that is a terrifying situation. And watching this with Jacob and you're just you are almost as scared as he is you don't understand what's going on like what what is happening to this man which really goes into Silent Hill and the the important question is is what's happening to Jacob and your character Silent Hill is this is this real is this what's actually happening now that's a powerful thought because now you're wondering am I actually seeing these horrors am I, is your character and me the only one who can see these things they look like monsters to you? You know, it's a, perfect, it's a Silent Hill 3 quote from there. Like, the little girl doesn't see any monsters. You know, I mean, th there's people who explain Silent Hill way better than I can. I mean, I probably don't understand half of it, let's put it that way. But it's a very powerful thought, and instantly makes the situation more creepy. You don't need to be classed as a horror game to do horror stuff. There's that Many games can do brilliant horror sections. Um, men I mean, they can be out of the blue as well, like The Vampire the Masquerade. It's a dark game, sure. Like, Bloodlines is a very dark game with lots of adult themes. However, out of the blue is a suddenly the friggin' mansion which will scare the living piss out of you the first time, because it's not expected. You don't expect it. It comes out of nowhere, and it's done really well. Things things appear out of your vision. You'll see something, and when you go around to see it clear, more clearer, it's gone. Something will appear behind you briefly. Like, stuff that is actually spooky. It doesn't need to have a scare called there, it's just there. You know? Then again, it does do quite a few jump scares in that section, to be fair, you know, let's be honest here, but... Um, I mean, that's another, that's another thing. You don't need 
to be label yourself as horror necessarily. So you know, swings and roundabouts, I suppose. Um, yeah, that was. I just wanted to clarify really my thoughts. Um, a ton of darkness, I suppose, is another good game that does it well. Uh, it doesn't. It does one jump scare for the entire thing, I believe, and it's quite a bad one, mind you. It's it's basically it's a good one of blowing your TV speakers. I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't played it, because you can have the crap scared out of you like I did. But um, the sanity effects, especially, is what I love, and what I'd love to see in more games. Not necessarily the same thing, but similar things, I suppose. Where you see it, you see something in the corner of your screen. Is it real? Is your character going mad? Is the sanity going down? Is that monster actually there? Might you know? Um, there are less subtle ones, of course. Where your gun, your gun will stop working, or your head will explode. They're not, they're not as cool. They're just funny. But when you've got stuff like um, your character starting to look into the corners, or painting subtly changing, now that's really cool. Alex will walk around the house, and when her sanity's low, uh, the the painting, the portraits will like move to the left and right. They will, um, they will follow you around the rooms. They will scream. They'll whisper. All that kind of thing adds this beautiful atmosphere that not many games can replicate. And I went into briefs about Stalker, and Stalker's atmosphere is second to none. If you've never played a Stalker game, do yourself a favour, pick it up off Steam, have a look. It is truly, truly exceptional. It's a, it's a one in a million style game. It's buggy as hell. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense the first time through, and it's hard as nails. But with the atmosphere and the scares and the whole thing that's going on, it's wonderful. It really is. I'm very, very tempted to do an LP of Stalker, I have to be honest. I just Just to show people what it's like, I suppose. I don't know if I can do it justice. I really, I still don't think I can, but I might, I might give it a go. I don't know. Anyway, they're, they're just my thoughts. Um, mainly with near and other bits because that was mentioned, I suppose. Horror. The closing note: horror doesn't have to be labelled in such a way. There is many degrees to horror. Horror is subjective, and basically, what one person sees horror is another. But when I do an LP of near, which hopefully will be eventually when I get stuff sorted out, you hopefully will see what I mean. It's I suppose adult horror as opposed to jumpy scares. It's what adults will be scared of. Things like that. If that makes sense. I, I don't want to sound, make that sound pretentious by any means. I mean, if, if you're you know under age of 18, I don't think you can't enjoy it or won't understand the situation. That's not what I mean. But in a sense, it's more adult fears as opposed to child fears. It's not the clown that's going to jump out your your closet. Let's put it that way. So yeah, that's, that's just some random thoughts today. I, I, you know, I just wanted to supplement the original video with that. So thanks for listening once again to my rambling. Um, if you guys like this, I, I can ramble about various subjects if you want to hear stuff. Add suggestions, maybe, and I'll, I'll think of stuff to say about. Anyway, um, no no video tonight, I don't think, um, unless maybe I'll do an Isaac run. Otherwise, the uh, amnesia will continue tomorrow, and as well as me still getting stuff ready for a Fatal Frame. So, yeah, cheers, guys. Till then.